Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu an la أشهد أن لا محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة Alhamdulillahi nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'ufiruhu wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyiyati a'malina man yahdihillahu falamudilla la wa man yudlil falahadiyala wa ashadu an la ilaha illa allahu ahdahu la sharika la wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh amma ba'd fa inna asdaq al-hadithi kitabullah wa khair al-hadhi hadhi muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sharr al-umuri muhdathatuhah wa kullu muhdathatin bid'ah وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد يقول الله عز وجل في القرآن الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون وقال تعالى يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا وقال تعالى وتعاونوا على البر والتقوى ولا تعاونوا على الإثم والعدوان واتقوا الله إن الله شديد العقاب أما بعد I want you to imagine a, a community, a masjid and it's a masjid, say your masjid and there is a youth, a young man, 18, 20 years old he comes to pray to the masjid and he comes and he parks his car and as he's parking his car he realizes that I don't want to take up any of the spots near the door because I want to save them for the older uncles and aunties who are going to come to the masjid. I'm going to save them for, leave them for uh, women with small children, for example. So he parks his car further away and he's walking towards the door of the masjid 
He's saying his adhkar. He's remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as he's about to walk in, he sees a sister who's struggling with a, with a, with a newborn or a small child picking up his seat. So he says salam to her. And he picks up the seat and he helps her to the door. And then as he enters, he's about to enter the door of the masjid. He sees in, uh, one of the uncles in the community, and one of the elders. And he says to him, Assalamu alaikum, uncle. And the uncle, he responds to him. He says, Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. And then he, the, the young man, he opens the door for the uncle. And he asked, the, the uncle asks him, how, how was your Eid? And he, was, he says, it was great. How are you doing? And so he says, Alhamdulillah, I am well. So they walk into the masjid and there are some children, they're playing, they're having fun. And then the mu'adhan, he calls the adhan. The mu'adhan, as soon as he calls the adhan, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. All of the children, they stop running, they're quiet. They come to the, to the front, the rows, and they sit down and they listen to the adhan. And after the adhan, they say their dhikr, their dua. And then they pray their sunnah, they pray their prayer. And afterwards, there's an event that where all the young people are helping, the older people are advising. And afterwards, everyone listens and they benefit and they go on you know, their, their, uh, to their homes. This, brothers and sisters, is just a, an imagination of what a community can be. And I want you to imagine that with me because that is, you know, that is an example, not the only example, of a very high-functioning, successful Muslim community. And the part of the Muslim community, especially in the West, especially in the United States, especially in the Western countries, is the masjid. The center of it is the masjid. And so, when we, almost when we talk about the community and we talk about masjid, we're almost talking about the same thing. There were times 30, 40, 50 years ago that when you said community, it was not interchangeable with masjid. Because back then, they didn't have masjids. You know, well, I heard one sheikh recently say that there were over 5,000 masjids in the U.S. And he said 30 years ago when he converted to Islam, there were 15. So back then you couldn't say that we have, you could say we have a community, but you can't say we have a masjid because many people didn't have masjids. Yet they had community. And if you go to travel to some of the Muslim countries and see even some of, you know, some other countries, maybe like Spain or other places where Muslim empire was there, Muslims were there, you'll see masjids that are abandoned. You see a masjid, but no community. But here in the West, our community and our masjid are almost are interchangeable. And so I want you to imagine this. Imagine a, a community that is functioning in this way, where the young have a say, they have an opinion, their voice counts, but they respect their elders and they and take their advice. And the, and the elders, they show mercy and rahmah to the, to the younger generation. And there's love and respect amongst, among all of them, brothers and sisters, young and old. And that is a community that was the prophetic community. And that is a community, and certainly, you know, the way that uh, many of us, if you grew up in a, in a, in a so-called Muslim-majority country, right, you didn't see that. Because in the masjid, the masjid was only a place for prayer. You went to the masjid, you prayed, and you go home. And if you needed social services, if you needed a, 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 you know, you needed help with, let's say, your rent, or you needed help with a job, or you wanted help with, with anything, you would go to, there's the Muslim, you know, they would have, a, they would have an office for the orphans. They would have an orphan for, for widows, an orphan for, uh, an office for something else. But we don't have that here. And so the masjid provides so many more services. There's so much that is entailed in having a successful community. So as we reimagine this Muslim community, we look, and in fact, I was doing some research and I said, what is that community? What is there research? Is there, how, do we know what, what it should entail? What Muslims want to see in that community? And in fact, there is the uh, Institute for Social Policy and Understanding, ISPU, is, did some research a few years ago. So I'm going to share some of that with you because when we look, alhamdulillah, you know, mashallah, you have uh, a, a beautiful community, you have a, a masjid, it still feels new, uh, you know, things are sparkling still. Uh, but you, you want to make sure that everybody feels welcome. Everybody, their, their, their needs are addressed. And there's so many different kinds of people. So many different kinds of people. 
right? So when we just say the young and the old, we, you know, are we talking about, how about those people in the middle? Maybe they have some kind of disability. Maybe they have some kind of health problem. Maybe, you know, we have to cater to them in a different way than we would cater to the usual uh, uh, average person. And so the, this uh, institute, they, they actually talk to, uh, you know, usually the way to do research, you can ask them either about the problem, right? That's the most common way. So when you go to the masjid, what problems do you see? But they didn't want to actually get the problem. They wanted to see what is the best model? What, what makes you feel the best? So they asked them the opposite question. When you go to the masjid, what is the best experience you had? Because they didn't want to say, here's a list of problems. What they wanted to say was, here's a list of solutions that the masjids and the communities should implement. So when they came up with this, you know, they asked some very broad questions and they came up, first of all, they found that there are three benefits of going to the masjid often. And going to the masjid often is associated with greater volunteering. Number two is incre increased civic engagement, right? I I involvement in your uh, broader community and, and politics and, and, and other things. And number three is better mental health, right? And if you look at these benefits, you say, well, is this a benefit for the individual? Or is this a benefit for the community? And in fact, it's a benefit for both. So having people come to the masjid, having more and more people come to the masjid, is a benefit for the community itself, but also for the individuals that come to the masjid. And so they ask the question, what does the dynamic, inclusive, welcoming mosque look like? And they came up with four broad, broad answers. Number one is a sense of community and belonging. You go there and you feel like you're part of a community. Number two, relevant and inspirational programming, like you know, lectures and talks and, and other things as well. Empowering leadership that brings out the best in the individual. So leadership that is involving other people, involving the volunteers, giving them things to do. A well-kept, uh, well-maintained facility. Well-maintained facility that one can be proud of. And then they said, how to make the masjids more welcoming? How to make the masjids more welcoming? So, number one, they said, you can have a welcoming committee. Right? You can have a bunch of volunteers, and it doesn't have to be necessarily some formal kind of, uh, you know, badge or anything like that. You have to say, I'm part of this committee. But you have a, a bunch of volunteers on the brother's side and the sister side, older ones, younger ones, who, who welcome people. Whether you're, you're just returning to the masjid or whether you're a new person. Right? You welcome them, you say salam to them. Um, ushers, maybe, uh, you know, people helping, you know, some of the, our older uncles and aunties, you know, they can't bend down to pick up their shoes when they take their shoes off. Maybe some ushers to help them, you know, say salam to them, smile at them, pick up their shoes and put them on the rack. So this kind of, uh, this is just an example. And so maybe guiding traffic within the masjid, guiding traffic outside the masjid, and we know we have, uh, mashallah, many volunteers doing that. Maybe a gift for newcomers. Right? Somebody comes to the masjid for the t first time, to, to the community for the first time, maybe give them something that they, they're going to see every day at, at their home and they remember that I have a family here. That I moved here, yes, I'm new to this community, but I have people who, who already care about me. So these are small things that will make people feel welcomed. Number two is having a welcoming culture. Right? One is the welcoming community, but having a welcoming culture. You go somewhere, people just look at you funny. Like, you know, they're looking at the corner of your eye and they're looking at you, and then you look at them and they look away and they keep looking and looking. You know, maybe they're looking at your clothes or your beard or your hijab or your, you know, they just, they just keep looking. That's not a welcoming culture. Right? People are always frowning and they're upset and they're sad and they're, you know, always angry. Right? That's not a welcoming culture. So trying to instill that and proactively welcoming people, saying salam and smiling in their face, not, not, not being judgmental, right? You see somebody walk into the masjid, right? Maybe they have, you know, five piercings on their body. Their ears are pierced, their nose is pierced, their tongue is pierced. And, you know, the average person, we would look at them and like, you know, look at them weird. In fact, you know, one, one sheikh, he said, um, uh, and I, I was surprised to hear this. He said, he heard somebody in the masjid Say to a young man who walked in, he looked unusual, he had, you know, unusual haircut, hairstyle, and he had tattoos or piercings, and he says, he says to him, he says, may the curse of Allah be on you. He came to the masjid to get the curse of Allah? Right? So this is, this is the kind of welcoming, uh, that's unwelcoming, but this is the kind of culture that we want to build. When people come, he says, ahlan wa sahlan, come on in, what's your name? You know, first time, we haven't seen you. Right? He says, oh, I, I go there and I feel welcome. I feel part of the community. They don't look at my funny clothes or my funny hairstyle or, you know, this or that. So having that kind of uh, non-judgmental environment. 
And remember the story, the Prophet sallallahu the seerah is full of, you know, subhanAllah, this is what the research found, but the seerah is full of all of these examples. This, you know, is not enough time to, you know, go into uh, an example for each one of these from the seerah. But the man, you know, who, who, who was drinking alcohol, he came, he drank alcohol, he came to the Prophet sallallahu the Prophet he got punished for drinking alcohol. He went back and he, and he drank again, he came back, he got punished again. Right? Because he wanted the punishment. He wanted the punishment because he didn't want to deal with the punishment in the hereafter. So he was punished and he went back and he did it again. And then so the people, they started to make fun of him. He says, this man, he keeps drinking. So they're mocking him, judging him. And so the Prophet ﷺ, he ad admonished them. He says, don't, don't make fun of him, don't mock him. Because he loves Allah and his messenger. Right? This is a sinner, clearly, in broad daylight. We can, everybody knows he's sinning. But the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the most truthful of tongues on this planet, testified that he loves Allah and His Messenger. Would, would, would the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam testify about me and you? That we love Allah and His Messenger? And he said if, that, if his forgiveness was to be distributed to the people, it would be enough for all of the people of the city. This is how much mercy and forgiveness he had from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So not being judgmental, be, having a welcoming culture. And number three, activities for people to connect and get acquainted. Right? So a lot of times you come to the masjid, right? maybe there's a brother sitting here right now, maybe his, uh, you know, let's say in his basement the pipe burst overnight and there's, a, there's a, a flood in his basement. And he's thinking, he said, oh I have to call this plumber, I called two people this morning and they didn't get back to me. But he's sitting here right now, the next person next to him is a plumber. Right? All right, so, so this is, you know, this is a, a networking and, and developing relationships and getting acquainted with your community. This is very important. So you know, somebody might be looking for some other service. Right? Somebody's looking for a doctor in a particular specialty. Maybe they're sitting next to one right now. So you're getting to know each other, getting to know what, they, what, what people do, what kind of skills they have, that's very important. Opportunities to socialize, to develop friendships. And we come to the masjid, we pray and we leave. So, you know, we need more activities where we can socialize, where we can just hang out and, uh, and you know, just get to know one another. Um, there are three categories of people who feel alienated from the masjid. And those three kinds, types of people are women, young adults, and converts. And so, you know, very briefly, um, uh, women, uh, they would like to see more women representation on the boards and on the committees. They feel that there should be active uh, women's committees in the masjid. The women's committees that are planning things that are specifically targeted. So usually, you know, what we do for the sisters is like, we say, okay, brothers are going to go, whatever, you know, some kind of activity. Okay, then sisters can do it on a different day. Same activity. But maybe that's not what sisters like, right? So, so activities that are specifically designed for sisters uh, and also for brothers, also for the older people, also for the younger people. Um, appealing spaces for women. Appealing spaces for women. And, you know, this is a true story. I was, this is, actually this happened a few weeks ago in a different state, where I was going to the masjid, I was going with my family, my, my daughter who's four years old, the youngest, is four years old, she usually comes with me for, for Juma, like she sits uh, on my side, on the, on the men's side. So, you know, my, my wife was going, my whole family was going, so I, and I was giving her the khutbah, so I said, you know, why don't you go with your mom? And she says, no, I want to go with you. But the, because the problem is, you know, if I, if I uh, give her the khutbah, and she has to go to the bathroom or something, right? So there's a kind of an emergency, you can imagine. So, so that, that was a, the reason I wanted her to go with, with her mom. But she says, no, no, I want to go with you. So after resisting and refusing a few times, I said, why? Why do you want to go uh, with me? She says, because it's too dark on the women's side. She's four years old, right? And so imagine, you know, if she feels the difference in, 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 in the atmosphere, just a simple thing as a light, right? Imagine the rest of the things that she's, she's feeling. Like, is this a place for me? Is this where I'm wanted? Is this where I, need, I should be? And so, um, another thing that the sisters want is access to the main musalla, right? So, uh, most, many mas masjids, they don't they provide access to the main musalla. They have them in, the, in a room somewhere, and it's like, sometimes they can see on TV, sometimes they can hear the, 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 uh, the speaker, sometimes they can't, right? And so the sister feels like, well, you know, if, I, if I'm going to watch on a TV and listen on a speaker, then I can just watch it on YouTube at home. Like, why do I need to come to the masjid? Right? So making people, and this, this goes uh, along with welcoming culture, right? If, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't change, they still get the same material, right? But it's, do people feel included? Do people feel welcomed? And so that's very important for us uh, to try to uh, implement that. 
match resources for sisters and for brothers. So whatever programming the brothers uh, have, the sisters should have something similar. They should have a similar kind of funding and support from the masjid, um, addressing relevant issues that are relevant to, to sisters. Next is young adults. You, uh, this is a fact that I didn't, a statistic I didn't know, which was that half of the Muslim population, masjid goers, are under the age of 45. 50% of people who go to the masjid are under the age of 45. And so this is a huge contingent of the Muslim population, Muslim community. So, you know, young adults, they want to see young adults in the leadership of masjids. They want to see professional development resources in the masjid, right? And so like, you know, the young adults want to know how, you know, what, what career is best for me? Even, even like youth, right? The, the youth want to know what kind of, you know, you see doctors who are successful, you see engineers who are successful, but you also see other you know, businessmen who are successful. There, there's so many people who are in different kinds of businesses and different kinds of uh, 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 specialties and, and expertise who are successful. They don't know what, what career to have and what kind of you know, uh, major to have. And so these are professional development things. They want mentorship and networking uh, in the masjids and, and from there. Because a lot of times when you know, somebody, you go to a non-Muslim, you ask them what's a good business, he says, oh, liquor business is very good, right? That's not the kind of advice you want, right? So when you come to a masjid, uh, you get that kind of advice where somebody tells you, well, you know, we don't use riba in our business. We don't use interest. Right? We, don't, we don't take mortgage. So, so those are the kind of, that's, that's why a lot of young adults want to um, come to the masjid for this kind of advice. Um, they want it to be family friendly. Again, the sister side, uh, you know, where most of the children are usually the younger ones, right? they have to have those facilities where they can, uh, they, they can be family friendly environment uh, for them to have their uh, younger uh, children. Opportunities to facilitate marriage. Now, this is different, difficult. Uh, it's a little awkward, but that's something that young adults want to see in the masjid because they come to the masjid, they want something, someone who is practicing and, and, and righteous and coming to the masjid just like them. Thirdly, uh, converts, right? Converts, they, they would like to see a convert care committee, right? Some kind of committee that, that knows that here is brother X who just converted or sister X, uh, Y who just converted and you know, where are they in their, in their, in their follow-up? Where are they, how much, did they learn wudu yet? Did they learn salah yet? Did they learn this, did they learn that? Who's teaching them those things? Just someone to kind of, uh, you know, uh, keep a tab on their progress and follow up with them. Mentoring uh, program for, uh, for them, uh, for, the, for the converts. Uh, convert support groups, right? So, so there are a lot of, they'll have all different kinds of problems. Right? They're coming from uh, one kind of family, someone's coming from a different kind of family. Some people find it easy to integrate into a fully functioning Muslim community. Some people don't. Right? So they can have a support group where they can sit and they say, Oh, you have that problem? I have that problem too. They can support each other and give each other advice. And discuss you know, relevant issues, challenges, and, and, and their successes. They want access to education, right? formal uh, education. Uh, so they, they, they don't miss out on the essentials, and that's important. Dedicated social events, dedicated social events for them, but also convert family events, right? Think, think about, you know, their family. Like they want to spend time with their family in a social, social way as well. And so maybe organizing something where they can bring their family. And that's also good for da'wah, where they get to see and be with, uh, with Muslims around them. So these are, you know, some um, very uh, research-based things that, that have come out. And so these are not like, you know, somebody's recommendations just based on, oh, I think this should happen or that should happen. This is what people want to see. And so we want to be, uh, uh, we, we should always, no matter how good you are, no matter how uh, successful you are, that you always try to be better, right? And so you look at these things and say, which of these things are we doing well? Which of these things do we need to work on? And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his tawfiq in trying to improve ourselves and our community. Anything good is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, anything wrong is from myself. May Allah forgive me and all of you. Alhamdulillah, الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله الصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولا أما بعد. I, I, I want to share a, a story. This is this guy is a friend of mine in another state. And you know, he told me, he says, I, I was born, uh, I grew up not being, if everybody could scoot to the right and forward, so just fill the gaps in so that people coming in can uh, find space. So if there's space, you just try to scoot to the right, inshallah, and forward. So this brother, you know, I asked him, he said, you know, I, I didn't grow up, you know, very religious, going to the masjid. And he says, very little I went to the masjid. And I, until the age of like, you know, 28, 30 years old. And I said, so why? Because I saw this brother, he was, he's like a pillar of the community. A pillar of the community. Like, this, if, you, if you want something done, and subhanAllah, you know, I use him like this. If, if I need something done, 
for the community, some events, some program. I ask him, and it, it just gets done. Just so organized, so dedicated, you know, to A to Z, very professional, very, get, gets things done. And then he spends his own money, you know, or, so like, I have to worry about nothing. If I say, you know, I'm thinking about this event, he's like, oh, I'll take care of it. You know, all of the organization, the, uh, uh, the logistics, everything, right? And then, you know, I was surprised to hear that he, he didn't grow up going to the masjid. This was like, you know, he, only within the last few years that he started becoming like this. And so I asked, you know, uh, he, he told me, he says, the way I started coming to the masjid, he says, there's this one brother. He said, he smiled at me and he welcomed me to the masjid. Because I was, I was waiting to hear like, you know, some, some, you know, he saw some revelation, you know, he saw some miracle happen and he saw some dream and, you know, he said, oh, that's it. Now I'm going to start going to the masjid. He said, this brother, he smiled at me. Brother, very good character. He's always gentle, smiling, kind. He said, he smiled at me and he welcomed me to the masjid. He's, he said, from that day, I've been going to the masjid. Right? How many, and it makes me wonder, how many more people of those are there outside? Like this guy, he can run a masjid by himself. Like this is how, how much of a pillar he is. Right? And so how many, how much more potential are we losing? Right? So, so think about that. That once we start implementing these things, that our efforts, you know, we don't need to do more. We just need to do it better. Right? So uh, the five domains that, uh, you know, one sheikh, he said, that, uh, that we, should, we should try to focus on. And uh, these are large, large category domains, but within them you can make subcategories. Number one is knowledge, right? Teaching knowledge, learning knowledge, making sure that the community is growing in their knowledge, in their knowledge base, and doing it in some kind of systematic form. Whether it's, uh, you know, doing seerah or doing the fiqh and doing some, uh, you know, seerah or, you know, whatever, the tafsir, whatever it is, doing it in a systematic way, not just a, a sporadic lecture here and there. Right? By doing it systematic so people can grow. If you just uh, do a lecture here and there, you don't know how much fiqh knowledge they have. You don't know how much knowledge of the seerah people have. And so doing it in an ongoing and cohesive way. Number two is to do worship. You know, ibadah together. Just like we do in Ramadan. Right? Maybe fasting together throughout the year. Fasting together, breaking the fast together. You know, praying together at nighttime. Having qiyam for the adults. Having qiyam for the young ones. Having you know, different kinds of worship uh, that, that people want to do, come together and do it. Maybe organize uh, a, a Umrah trip or something like that. But doing worship together. And number three, to have a successful community is to have administration, effective executive boards and committees to ensure that the masjid is running in its optimal, most efficient uh, way. And, and, and that the leadership is catering to the needs of all of those people. Right? Imagine, you know, I, this is a true example. Again, another masjid that was being built in another state. I asked the brothers, there's, it's like three brothers, um, you know, they were, uh, they were basically the, uh, you know, the ones running the project. And, and, you know, there's very little shura, if any, from the sisters. So he says, oh, masjid will be done, and, you know, it'll be do done next month, or, you know, I said, you know, and how about the sisters, you know, are they involved? It's like, oh, we ask them when we need to ask them. I said, do you have a, uh, a diaper changing table in the, in the bathroom? He said, uh, no, but we can put one. Okay, so something so basic, right? If you just ask a sister, what do you need in the, in, in, uh, in the, in the masjid? It would be something so fundamental, right? But you don't think of it. So again, you know, administration needs to involve those people. So, so a, a consultation, right? How about, how about people with disabilities, right? Are we taking, alhamdulillah, you know, that's something, some masajid, they have trans, you know, uh, sign language interpreters, and, and other kinds of, you know, uh, uh, issues that, you know, impairments that people have, and trying to address those. We, we can't meet all of them, but we should at least be cognizant of them and try to make an effort to include those people. The, the, the fourth category is finances. Of course, having funds to run short-term and long-term projects, and then socializing. So socialization events to connect and develop friendships and uh, acquaintances. In conclusion, brothers and sisters, there's, there's always, there's always that, more that you can do. There's always, and this is, the, uh, this is the nature, this is the, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when we look to his seerah, we can say, you know, uh, that the, the Muslim is, is ever improving. Right? And, and our condition is ever changing. And so that's why even we, when we make dua, we say, Allahumma ya muqallib al qulub He changes the hearts, right? And, and he changes often. And this is why when we make dua, when we pray, we say, ihdina sirat al mustaqim Are we not already guided? But it's, it's that we need to continue to improve ourselves. And so we could try to continue to improve our communities. I, I, in conclusion, I want to share this uh, story. A few years ago, again, in another state, 
we did a, an Eid prayer, a really big Eid prayer in a very big uh, baseball stadium. And, you know, we had a lot of festivities and activities and fun and, uh, you know, great. Uh, everything was really nice. And I remember when we asked for feedback from the community, you know, there was this one sister. And this was around the time when Trump was president and there's a lot of Islamophobia and there's, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, hate going around uh, everywhere. And so this one sister, you know, she wrote a comment. She says, today after this Eid, I felt proud to be Muslim. I felt proud to be Muslim. And so I, I wonder, you know, when people come to our masjids, right, the over 5,000 masjids in the U.S., how many people say, I, I prayed Juma or I prayed my prayer and I felt proud to be Muslim because of the way I felt I got treated. And it's not always external. The way, if you feel proud, it's not, it's not always external. But there are many external fa uh, factors, right? Because our pride in Islam comes from the inside also. But how many people, how many people in our community, how many people that come newcomers in all of these categories that we talked about, they would say that today I felt proud to be a Muslim. And so, inshallah ta'ala, I pray that, uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the tawfiq to continue to develop our communities. Uh, in fact, I am going to be, uh, many of you have heard uh, the rumor, I'm going to be coming back uh, to, moving back to Bayonne after 15 years of being away. And uh, inshallah, so I'm happy to, uh, to uh, you know, help in the development and improvement and, and uh, 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 you know, all, all the, the changes that, that many of them have been, uh, that have been implemented and to continue to improve uh, the community. Um, so I'm very excited about uh, the work that's been done over the past 15, 20 years. Uh, but, you know, let us build a model community. A model community is a small community, but in a way it's a very big community. Right, but build that model community that their adjacent cities and states and you know can look at and say, well, you know, they did it this way. There's civic engagement, political engagement, uh, 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 interfaith, and, and all of these activities, and people are learning and educating and growing and developing. Um, and so we want to model that in other places. So inshallah ta'ala, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq uh, to, to uh, look at ourselves and always introspect and say, how can we do it better? And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq to make it better. ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكوننا من الخاسرين اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو فاعف عنا اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو فاعف عنا اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو فاعف عنا ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم انصر الإسلام وعز المسلمين اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين في كل مكان سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين and straighten your roads الله أكبر الله أكبر الشهد لا إله إلا الله الشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاة قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah. Allahu Akbar Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Maliki
قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد الله سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين قل أعوذ برب الناس ملك الناس إله الناس من شر الوسواس الخناس الذي يوسوس في صدور الناس من الجنة والناس الله سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم uh, just a couple of announcements uh, we also have a brother who's going to take his shahada another young brother mashallah um, but uh, as far as the halakas for, and all the classes inshallah next Friday um, the, uh, the sisters halakas will be beginning uh, for the brothers, Halaqa, I didn't get a confirmation. I'm not sure if they're starting tonight. Mo, so you are? Okay, so the, 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 the YM Halaqa is starting tonight. What time is it? Okay, 8 p.m. tonight, inshallah. So all the youth from ages uh, 14 and up to 25, uh, they should be coming tonight, inshallah, uh, at 8 p.m. The sisters are starting all of their Halaqas next week, inshallah. And then uh, we'll announce all the other classes when they're starting very soon. Uh, the LKA, the Saturday School, the Little Khalifa Academy is starting tomorrow, inshallah. They have a pizza eat party uh, with some uh, educational and fun stuff. Uh, that is starting tomorrow, inshallah. And the brother who's going to take his shahada. Bismillah. So we have Brother Patay here who uh, wants to accept uh, Islam. Uh, accepting Islam is a, is a function of the heart. So you accept it in the heart, you become a Muslim. This uh, taking the shahada publicly is a formal, uh, just a formality. So uh, inshallah, you know, he's already uh, spoken with the brothers and accepted Islam and, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his heart. And we're just going to do a formal declaration uh, out loud now and, uh, and then welcome him uh, into the community publicly inshallah. So, uh, Brother Patay, just to repeat uh, after me. And uh, so first we'll say it uh, in English, so you know what you're saying. Say, I, I bear witness. I bear witness. 
that there is no God worthy of worship. That there is no God worthy of worship. Except Allah. Except Allah. And that Prophet Muhammad. And that Prophet Muhammad. Uh, peace be upon him. Peace be upon him. Is the last and final messenger. Is the last and final messenger. Very good. If you can say it in Arabic, say Ashhadu. Ashhadu. Allah. Allah. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illa. Illa. Allah. Allah. Wa Ashhadu. Wa Ashhadu. Anna. Anna. Muhammadan. Madan. Madan. Muhammadan. Madan. Madan. Muhammad. Muhammad. Rasulullah. Rasulullah. Very good. You're going to get a lot of hugs, so welcome to the community, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa barakatuh. I would just like to make a quick announcement to everyone. Um, Alhamdulillah, these past few days, we celebrated our Eid in safety and security. But our brothers and sisters in Palestine did not. On Eid day alone, over a hundred children were killed. They weren't able to celebrate that day. They weren't able to enjoy that day. Instead, they have a traumatic memory that will live with them forever. To that end, inshallah, there is going to be a protest today in New York, in Herald Square. Herald Square is on 35th Street and 6th Avenue in New York, and the protest will be at 4 p.m. We need to take initiative and stand up for ourselves. No one is going to stand up for us until we do it for ourselves. And if the suffering in Palestine is not enough to help you realize how important this is, then I would like to direct you to an incident that happened right before Eid here in New Jersey. Here in New Jersey, on the Rutgers campus in New Brunswick, 
the Muslim office for the students of Rutgers was attacked. It was vandalized. Someone came in in the night and destroyed property and stole the Palestinian flag that was there. So there's no real mystery as to why that happened. If we cannot defend ourselves here, then we can't expect any help anywhere else. We must take a stand for ourselves, inshallah. So again, Herald Square, 35th Street and 6th Avenue in New York at 4 p.m. today, inshallah, a protest for Palestine. We need to stand with our brothers and sisters. Ujzakullah khair to anybody who can make it. Thank <laughs> you. 